This is episode 56, Beer and Cheese featuring Dysphagia Cafe, part two. And we're back with another episode of SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. (laughs) And here's our podcast. For the giggly SLP. (laughs) Deb has almost fell like seven times. I keep almost falling, but I'm laughing because I startled (laughs) Maria on purpose at the intro. But look at what a performer she is. Yes. She still did it. That's right. I... You know, I'm very experienced yes. with uh, dancing. Yeah. And I think as a young kid, by being a dancer, it's... You're like, turn, that's my cue. That's my cue. I got it. But I was, just in my defense, I was on my phone, but I was writing myself a reminder of something I didn't want to forget. That's so, good. Do you feel like reminders are helpful to you? A hundred percent. And I oh. like when I do it and then I do like mark as completed and I feel very good about so myself. You, you use the Reminders app on your iPhone. Yeah, on the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it already comes with the phone. Right, but, yeah. But I will say this. Uh, I was actually listening to a talk on, uh, I think it was the Insight Timer app, which I mm-hmm. love. And I'll, I always post about it on the story. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I was listening to this meditation course and it was saying how to like uh unleash the inner child in you and not to always be worried about your to-do list and one really um mention one uh really important point point that landed on me was um when you're like stressed out and going through the motions of life stop and ask yourself and think about it when i was seven and eight years old and i was just playing and stuff like how did I picture myself as an adult and like does that person match who you are today you know so uh, when I'm like too concerned with just checking off the things on my checklist then I think about that and I'm like hmm this is not the person I imagined myself to be would little Maria be satisfied with your current Maria well yes because I am introspectively thinking of would she be and then if I'm not at that exact moment I like lighten up oh okay so yeah so So you make this you constantly make this adjustment I wouldn't use the word constantly because I only heard this course like two days ago but it's definitely eye-opening and uh you know, hopefully I... But if little Maria met Maria today, would she be like, oh, good. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. yeah. I think... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, all kids like you. Why wouldn't little you like you? Oh, thank you. I wouldn't say all kids like me, but kids like me. And oh. I'm just... Because I'm just hanging out and yeah. having fun and um, not trying... Yeah, I mean, like all scare kids... them or anything, you know? Don't like <laughs> everything. I mean, it's very kid-like to not like mm-hmm. things, so... Yeah, that's true. So it makes you more selective, right, if you yeah. will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so you're just actually extra likable. Oh, is yeah. is that a compliment? Yeah, no, oh, likable. Okay. Yeah, there's lots about you to like. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I didn't know this episode was Feed Maria compliments. Oh, but well, thank it you. is will, because... Oh, well, I want... Because oh, yeah. you're going to interview me, right? Right, yes, I sure am. And I wanted to talk about what we're drinking because yeah. this is a summer edition. And this is part two. So let's remember that. What do we know about part twos? Part twos. There's we sequels. know there's always a part one. Right. That, yeah, there's a part one. And there's maybe a theme. And in this theme, this thematic, <laughs> right. if you will, episode, yeah. we are drinking a summery wine. Uh, sorry, a summery beer. Mm-hmm. And... This beer is a seasonal summer beer. So there's just right. different levels to the theme, which is summer and yes. fun and yes. drinking. Right. Yeah. And that we already had this. Yeah, we definitely right. already had so this. So this is the second. I'm still on my first beer, uh, though. Well, well, I'm not on any beer, but I had a right. whole beer. So Kay. I just want to. I didn't drink that the much episode with it. That's, that. Oh, <laughs> that's what I just want to point out. Right. Well, you didn't need to point that out. I don't think. Well, maybe I'm feeling a bit of self doubt. Oh, yeah. So I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, everyone, you right. have to cut me a break. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So now I feel less pressure because I took like not so much sips of this, and I'll tell you why. Because it's a wheat beer and mm-hmm. it's very filling. And then the cheese that we ate, right. which I ate it all, 
Yeah, oh, it I was ate, good. Yeah, I ate so much of it. We be- voted eat it in part one. <laughs> Definitely eat because dill, man, dill yeah. is so great. You know, and it's going to have a breakout one day. It's going to be like, you know, like how hummus broke out mm-hmm. and kale broke out. Like dill yeah. is going to be a trend. D- it should be. Yeah. Um, or we could start it. I think so. Yeah. If you guys use dill, just tag us. Yeah. Let us on know. Instagram. Yeah. And our, your story, like throw some dill in your salads, your yeah, sandwiches. We know about it. Um, if you make tzatziki sauce, if you're Greek or if you want to partake in a nice uh easy recipe mm-hmm. i recommend to put some dill throw in a little a, dill in, in that. a tzatziki yes yeah what does dill do for the tzatziki mm-hmm. what is <laughs> what do you feel dill adds to the plate a nice uh, mintiness not minty it's the wrong word but it add nice fresh herbness okay just so as like, dill does right it's like refreshing yes and it's like easily identified right? yes you know mm-hmm. and it, it's a very distinct taste Right. So maybe like in your speech therapy sessions, you just always need to be the dill. Wow. You know, like you're not there all the time and like you're really vibrant. Yeah. yeah. W- when you show up mm-hmm. like <laughs> and then the, you, they really appreciate and then it. It's gone and people are like, why don't people use more dill? Right. You know? So so just try to be the dill in life and therapy. Wow. This yeah. is this is amazing. All yeah. that's all I have to say. Because it reminds me of the cheese. You know, like the cheese is why I didn't drink so much because I feel quite full and then it's a wheat beer, so you know, I feel quite full now. So yeah. I'm gonna slowly sip on this beer. Yeah, I liked this. It it's called Hell or High Watermelon and that means that nothing will get in your way of the watermelon. That's right. Yeah. Nothing will get in my way of eating the dill cheese. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to quiz Maria with a uh, very, very scientific quiz. We're going to find out what kind of a lady Maria is. Luck be a lady. That's all I want to say. Tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm ready. So these, these answers have three options. It's usually like a yes, no, or a maybe. Something mm-hmm. along the lines of that. So... Um, one, are you a good listener? I think so. Not really. Or it depends on what I am listening to and the person. I'm going to go with, I think so. I think so. I think you're a good listener. Thank you. I mean, sometimes you like to be like, okay, but not to be selfish, but uh, now to turn it back (laughs) to me, that's like one of your favorite lines. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Yeah. So how often do you get into fights with your friends? Frequently, I've only gotten to a few fights. I rarely have ever. I would say I have only gotten into a few. Good. How protective. Oh, sorry. I'm how, reading. Yeah. How protective are you over your friends? Very, very protective, protective, or not very protective. They can handle their Definitely own. Definitely very. Very like it's protective. Sometimes I worry about myself. Oh, oh, because are you like possessive? No, I Uh-oh. I did um, maybe hit someone. You hit someone? I did. Why? Because I felt like he made a racial slur toward my friend and I didn't want to tolerate it. Oh, did, mm-hmm. did you do like a kickbox and hit on him? No, it was... It was it was uh, worse than I thought, but he laughed it off, and I was like, I don't think it's funny. Did wait? You punched him and like <laughs> no, no, like an open hand slap. A open hand slap. You slapped a guy across the face. I could deny this, so no, no, I did not. Oh, okay, no, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm denying this. Wow, that took a lot of courage. I've never <laughs> felt that. I mean, I've envisioned it. I know what my whole choreographed fight back will be if someone grabs me from behind. Right. I'm going to take my elbow to their gut. I'm going to swing my fist back and hit them in the nose. And then I'm going to swing up my elbow and knock them under the chin. And then I'm going to put my arm around their neck and then bend them over behind me so they roll over my back. And then I'm going to step on their throat. Uh, Wow. Yeah, okay. that's what I will do. I did not do any of that. If I just they did come like at me a, from the front, mm-hmm. I'm going to slap them with both hands on both ears at the same time. That and does then hurt. I'm going to yeah. punch them in their throat. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third thing will be lower. But they always anticipate that to be protected first and they don't protect their face. So wow. Good one. Go there. Then go throat. Okay. Because then, yeah, like you can't breathe and shit. Good point. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so what kind of lady is Maria? Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you <laughs> would you consider yourself independent? Yes. Yes. 
I w- actually, I would say for the most part, for I am. For the most part. Yes. Okay. I have to read the answer so all the audience can hear as well. Do you work hard? Yes, not really, or not at work, but in other areas of my life, I do. Yes. Yes. Are y- How unique are you? Very unique, semi-unique, or not very unique? I really want to say very unique, but then, you know, Mike called me basic, but I'm like, eh. Mike called you basic? Remember? I'm going to go with very unique still, though. You know, you're still very unique. I'm still okay. very unique. Yeah, you are whatever you say you are. Thank you. Exactly. Um, are you good at multitasking? Yes, no, or... Okay, yes, no, or depends on the tasks. Sorry. Depends on the tasks. It depends on the tasks. Okay, mm-hmm. good to know. Do you have a good balance in your life? Yes, I try to, or no, I have too many balls to juggle. I try to. I try to. Do you have a hard time standing up for yourself? No. Yes, no, or sometimes? No, I'm really good no. at that too. You are, ooh. You are a feminist extraordinaire. Wow. Yeah. That's okay. exciting. You stand up for ladies of all kinds. You want equality and you work very hard to make sure everyone gets it, not just one type of woman. You are tough and speak out of what is out for what is right at your core you are an amazing person i like that i always say that that deep down i am a good person and maybe some things get muddled or miscommunicated on the way but i'm sorry i always come from a good place so yes and in my defense of the story that i shared that i cannot confirm nor deny it was fine afterwards it was not a big deal it calmed down i just probably overreacted no i think that that's great that you did that you did not do that um yeah that's great Mm -hmm. um i would like to know worst case scenario description on this test like did someone say you're not doing really well like right you, yeah you, <laughs> what kind? you are a sheep and <laughs> like right. you, you only do what other people do and you have no ideas right kudos to that no, yeah. I'm just um work on yourself i don't think that there is any option that i don't know who yeah were, well that's because being a lady is great right so yeah any answer is really a good one so that's mm-hmm. my opinion on that so going back i wanted to cut for a short commercial break This episode is brought to you by Fusion Web Clinic. Fusion Web Clinic is an all-in-one practice management software designed specifically for pediatric speech therapists, physical therapists, and occupational therapists who need to save time and streamline their practice. With unlimited customer support, free onboarding, and an ever-growing set of features, Thousands of therapists across the country use Fusion every day to treat their kiddos. To learn more and check out Fusion's library of free resources, visit them online at fusionwebclinic.com backslash cheese. And if you sign up for a free demo of the software, mention the SLP's Wine and Cheese podcast to receive a $50 credit off your first month of Fusion. And we're back with another segment of hmm, what to call it <laughs> I know. I what is like, this relaxing what is this segment with called? maria yeah relaxing with maria i've made the decision uh-huh. that's For, what it's called r- what is it relaxing with maria okay because i don't want to say chilling because it's too uh what's that word informal and right i just want my interviews to be relaxing and fun and educational so I, I try to embody that good in my interviewing skills, which I never thought I would do one day. So this is really a great opportunity. And uh, one more side note is I was just telling Deb how you just got to take opportunities as they come. You know, I never thought I would be hosting a live show. Did it. Never mm-hmm. thought I'd be interviewing the man behind Dysphagia Cafe. Did it. Do you say dysphagia? Yes. You do? We talk about that in the interview, too. Oh, I only say dysphagia. Mm. If I say dysphagia, that's just because somebody else said it, and then I'm like, I should guess I should copy them. Yeah. What? But I say dysphagia. Okay. Well, Why do you say dysphagia? Well, uh, should I give it away? But Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Okay. okay. No. All right. I won't give it away. No, 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 no. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so would you say your biggest area of interest is in 
dysphagia? It, it is for sure. So then under dysphagia though, I mean, I say it this way, I say dysphagia is maybe I in Greek. I don't know. No, I, you know, <laughs> I, I say, you know, like I'll say, dis, I'll say dysphagia and then I'll get corrected by about 15 speech with our speech pathologists about it. But I just, I just say, Oh, it's my Jersey accent. <laughs> but, you're, but you're proving me wrong that it's not a coastal thing. I'm just saying it wrong. Well, in Greek, phagito means to eat, and the dysphagia is like unable to eat. So I'm just keeping the vowel the same, you know, dysphagia, phagito. That is the correct way to say it. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm keeping it Greek, really. Since we're on it, can you tell me how to say dysph dysphagia in Greek? I'm not sure how to say that in Greek. I never worked in Greek, but I will look it up on Greek. Uh, but how, what did you just say? The phagia? Oh, phagito is to oh, eat. Yeah. Oh, I love So... I just, you know, dysphagia is like not able to eat, you know, like yeah. function with eating. Yeah. So it, that's nice. That's it's probably like, it's probably like de fagito. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not a linguist. It's all Greek or, to me. That's what you should. Do. I'm not a phonetician, but um, this, that's, that's my guess. This vaya. But huh? it does have that ah. This vaya. Oh. Okay. okay. Fun fact, uh, my cousin, oh. it's actually her voice. She works for Google. So this... this who is that? This, that's my cousin, literally. No way. No, it's really? my cousin who lives in Greece who works for Google. They picked her voice to be the Google Translate for Greek. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so that's I, my cousin. I can't believe I'm meeting you right now. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. I know, right? Got family everywhere. So it's, it's not it's not just like Siri doing everything. No, the Google okay. yeah Google Translate yeah Greek voice is my cousin. Wow, what's her name? Lu uh, Speedy Lula Susan. Oh. I call her Lula. Okay. Okay. Yes. So next time I need to use that, I'll be like, oh my gosh. Hey, Marie's cousin. I'll be like, I know her. You know her? Yeah, I know her cousin. That's right. Yeah. So what would you say is rewarding about your, the cute setting? Uh, you know, for me, it's seeing something new every day. Uh-huh. Yes. It really is. It's, it's, uh, I worked in rehab for about nine months early on in my career. And I found that, you know, it's just, maybe it's a personality thing. I don't know. I just found it really hard to spend an hour a day with a patient who didn't necessarily need speech therapy for an hour a day. Yes. Um, especially when they didn't have, uh, when they had like minor cognitive issues and you know, the, the, the whole process of getting someone to rehab, they need three hours of therapy and they need speech OT PT possibly. And so I yes. just, I let's work on jokes. Yeah. Figured yeah. It let's out. work on cheese jokes and yeah, yeah let's talk Let's talk about, <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, you know what it was? I, I worked with a lot. I was in the spinal cord injury team, and that was oh, kind wow. of challenge. So you can imagine if they, you know, a lot of these guys who did not have brain injuries and did not have swallowing problems had to be on speech therapy. Right. And I just, I just couldn't justify um, as a new clinician about why, what I was going to be doing with them. And so... Right. I just, you know, writing goals for them is probably like, oh my gosh it was it was like oh it's the what i was told to do is like focus on oh this is all new learning for them i'm like well that's not a cognitive problem i mean like this is they're they're now a quad and this is not you know i so i just had a hard time justifying that and there was a lot of pressure of course to yeah. you know, productivity and but exactly i really liked the acute setting i liked the investigative medical part of it you know, um, uh, I went in thinking it was kind of neck, you know, my, my territory is like neck to brain, but just learning about just the whole body and the whole system is just, was really fascinating to me. And like getting down to like, and trying to hypothesize what the cause of the swallowing problem was, was, and that was always able to help treat the problem. Like that's something to this day that I think it's just, it's really interesting and really that my mentor really, really taught me how to um, get into a medical chart. So not just looking for pneumonia, stroke, but like 
understanding renal function and pulmonary function and a white blood count. I remember that was yeah. Good. Oh, and, and then so much more beyond that. And it's just it's okay. so it's just so so interesting. And and I realized that if it wasn't like that for me, and and I can't speak for everybody, if it wasn't like that for me, I think you know it, it does not take a specialized master's degree, right? to give someone applesauce and then stop them when they cough. Right. Right. It takes a master's degree to understand, to actually evaluate the whole system and the whole chart. And so that, I think honestly, that keeps it very interesting um, and probably prevents some burnout um, about doing something that's redundant and just kind of looking for these overt symptoms that mm. honestly a nurse could do or a doctor could do or, or a nursing assistant could do. Right. So, yeah. yeah, of course they're called avert for a reason, right? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, like I'm overtly drinking this glass of wine right now. Right. Right. I overtly drink it too. You know, so and there's no question right now for your listeners that she just downed that cup. Like, <laughs> like every that was an overt. Yes, I did. That's that was an overt gulp. Summertime. I was very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Summertime. <laughs> yes. Summertime. Yes. So you mentioned like burnout. So you feel yeah. like when you feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if you feel yeah. like you're, you're getting deeper than just like watching someone eat applesauce and cough right. or not cough or throat clear right. or not clear, you feel like, wow, I'm really like investigating. I'm really... Is that right. there's there's a deeper layer that's really starting to come out in the literature right now, and um, I won't bore myself with literature talk right now because we're talking. About, I mean, we have wine and we're relaxed. Yeah, we can keep but, it nerdy. You know, keep it light. Um, but I'm really excited. I'm really excited where our thinking is going because we're starting to talk about things that I think have just been on the cusp for for a long time, such as. We're really involved in the study of cough right now. Mm -hmm. And we're really involved with the study of, it does not so much aspiration, right? I, I teach a nursing, uh, new nurses course at my hospital oh, cool. for, to, to learn about tracheostomies and stuff. And I touch briefly on swallowing and I always ask them, what's the definition of aspiration? And I get, you know, fun answers here and there, but literally the definition is anything that falls below the vocal cords, right? Well, what we're starting to talk more and more about, and I hope it really catches fire with the, our larger clinician population is that we're, we're not so, we shouldn't be as concerned with the aspiration as we are to understand what can cause an aspiration pneumonia. So when I talk about, you know, when you're writing like a little goal, mm -hmm. um, such as patient will show no signs and symptoms of over uh, signs or symptoms of aspiration, you know, I'm starting to change my goals a little bit to no um, clinical indication of aspiration-related infection, right? Because, right, so patients who possibly are chronic aspirators, such as head and neck cancer patients, patients who've been radiated in the neck, we're not going to necessarily change their course of being aspirators. And your audience can't see, but I do air quotes a lot. And I, I, someone's been giving me a hard time about that. I don't know why I do it. But why? why? I just did air quotes on aspiration, <laughs> right? Because they have the head and neck trauma, you're saying. So yes. it's kind of almost yes. like that's their baseline that they are going to aspirate. It's going to be an issue for their life, and we know that. But what our literature talks about and what's, what we need to focus on is that this population may not necessarily get an aspiration to motive aspiration related infections such as aspiration pneumonia and so we can kind of focus on how to help them avoid that infection not necessarily avoid aspiration does that make sense yeah i get it you know listeners get yeah it. it's so that makes it that's that's a whole different puzzle to put together you know rather than just I seeing avoid the aspiration related Infection. You got it, Maria. You got it. How, do you, how does one avoid that? Oh, that's a. I knew you were going to ask that. Sitting up. 
Well, it's kind of like you're, you're probably thinking like chicken and egg, right? Like, well, if someone's aspirating, then they're probably at some point going to get an aspiration related infection. Uh-huh. Right? I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I mean, I, I, okay. I was thinking that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm wondering. I'm thinking and asking at the same time. So, so, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it has a lot to do with things that have maybe nothing to do with swallowing. You know, there's, oh, so it's like, there's yeah, it has to do functioning, like if they're dehydrated, the white blood yeah. count. Well, also yeah. like, are, are they bed bound? Right. Are they, are they feeding themselves? Is someone, are they dependent on others for feeding? You know, in our dementia population, say if I had two modified barium swallows side by side and they were both like horrendous swallowing problems. But I didn't know the history of each one of those. And then you told me, they, they almost looked identical, which never happens, but say they did. And they were both aspirating profusely. If you told me that on the right is the lady with 90-year-old dementia, Alzheimer's, who is nonverbal, in bed all day, um, and refuses most of her meals and is being fed by other people and requires a bedpan and all that stuff, yeah, that person's going to be more likely for an aspiration pneumonia than the guy who is though just as bad of a swallowing problem, but he's a 50 year old man who just had major head and neck cancer surgery, but he's mobile. He's with it. Um, he has a strong cough. You know, all those factors are considered. So right. it's, it's, and it's the, it's an important area to learn and to study. Um, and I think there's more and more that's going to be coming out about that decision making. Uh, and this person is aspirating and they're less risk for pneumonia. This one's is aspirating and they're more risk. So I, I believe there's more, more to come on that one. So, so it's not just like the signs and symptoms. There's a lot, right. other, a lot of yeah. other variables. For sure. For and sure. You have to know them and be on the lookout yeah. for them and yeah. monitor them. Yeah, and it's really, you know, I love the patient-centered goals and just understanding where, what, what, what are the goals for that patient, what are their goals, and um, with eating and drinking despite the risk, and kind of being a collaborator, collaborator with the goal rather than someone who's saying, you know, sign this waiver if you want to eat because I disagree, you know? Right. Um, I know there, there can be a lot of that out there with pressures from different facilities to minimize risk, but... Um, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Wow. So what are some ways that you avoid burnout? I mean, oh man. Like you have more things to think about now. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> did, I, did I just burn you out? No, I'm very interested. I think this is great. I would love to have you like back on to talk like solely about like maybe like just head and neck cancer. Or just, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, 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 uh, you know, I mean like on a, like on a, it's so funny. It's like in my sp- I started off, you know, with the shameless plug, my website, Dysphagia Cafe, yes. like about six years ago. And strange, you know, I realized over the past couple of years, like my spare time is doing work stuff. Okay. <laughs> and so, so I, I kind of took a step back a little bit and just, you know, it's nothing sexy or interesting as far as like I go on a hike or anything like that. It's really just, I'm, sometimes just more intentional about just unplugging, you know, and whether that means like when I drive up, pull up in my driveway, just turn off the phone. Like everything's going to be okay for the next eight hours. If I turn off the phone and just go to, you know, attend to things at home and watch Handmaid's Tale without, you know, taking pictures and putting it up on my story. Um, and uh, making memes about her um, in her red outfit. No, I'm just kidding. She has yeah. a, her face is sometimes has a funny meme vibe to it, you know? Right. I cannot yeah. wait to keep like watching season two. <laughs> I hope it's not a disappointment. That's great. I hope not. Uh, I'll definitely let you know my thoughts. Yeah. So, um, but it, you know, it's really just kind of being in t- intentional, unplugging and picking days and I'm not going to work on side hustles in my spare time. It was just, it was just, it was like this obsession. 
and it's like I, I feel like I'm see it's like it's out there and I I realize that you know Maria we have a high level degree right I think I mean, so <laughs> should we should we be working four jobs and and just nonstop? I know I used to teach kickboxing my first year and I was like, yeah I used to teach kickboxing and I was like working at a gym and I was like yeah. where is my does my energy go so I had yeah. to Cut that out too. So I get it. I know there's a lot of SLPs who are probably like waitresses too, where they're like always on. Yeah. So at least yeah. the podcast, I get to sit and drink yeah. wine. So I yeah. better with my side hustles. You know, they're they're becoming less tiring, but still have the side hustle. Yeah, yeah I mean, a side hustle with a a little wine buzz is probably better, right? I mean, I, yes. You know, you know I don't get as sweaty anymore with kickboxing. Yeah, yeah, but but for the home health SLPs, do not drive to your appointment buzzed. It's like wow. I want to, I don't want you to get a bad rep, so I want to put that out there. So. Right. Yeah, but definitely uh, ask for the thickener if you're. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That but, but recently, I you know I you know sometimes see some private patients and mm -hmm. I do this aphasia cafe, and then I recently you know, ran into some people who are also thinking like private practice and they're like, you know, in my spare time, I'm a bartender. I'm like, Oh my, like we're the, we're like the hardest workers out there. We I think. are. I wonder you know? why is it just, I, we want to help people. Is it I mean, like, is it really for the money? I don't, I don't think it is. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to wonder if it's like, and we happen to live to the two most expensive places in the world. I maybe, know, right? maybe we're not a good example. Yeah. But um, we need to do it to uh, afford our wine. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I have a more refined palate now, you know. <laughs> right, right. right. When you got uh, your job. More wine sponsors, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This wine is great. Yes, guys, go out and get some bitch wine. <laughs> yeah. Don't get off. <laughs> but can you want to do a little promo? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I have been. Rich wine is great. It's by the Kalatayud grape. I talk about it all okay. the time. It's just great okay. fame. Uh, okay. By Grateful Palate. And okay. the, the name is the best. It's like, it I is. got this wine and the label just says bitch on it. And you're like, here, I got you wine. And I have to say that's like a really good way um, to wrangle in the, the male SLP audience. You know, um, I know, I know that's, you know, I, I hope, I hope I'm, I'm helping with that. You know, you are. raise that's the awesome. ratings for the 30 to 40 year old male SLP crowd that you were, you were trying to reach. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. have like four new listeners now. <laughs> what? Have you ever wondered why that is? Why are men not attracted to this field or do they not know about it? You tell me you're the male. I don't know. Oh yeah, I guess so. Well, I don't yeah. want to mansplain anything, but no, go for it. We want your male opinion. Male um, opinion matter too. I know it was fun being the only male because, like, I did like the joke in class and all the way. Yeah. Ah, and all that crap. Right. You know, but um. I know there the, were males in my classes. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think maybe I don't know. Is there? Is it a? I I think it's like a marketing problem. You think um, I mean, I, I mean, maybe it's changed since I graduated, but I had no idea there was a, another side to speech. And, you know, I mean, this side is appealing. And I think in general, traditionally, it's, you know, having the summer off and friendly for having kids and all, you know, that maybe that yeah. there's that aspect to it. That's how um, it was pitched to me, my accountant. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not a teacher, not a doctor. <laughs> money make your own hours i was like interesting tell me about this yeah, I don't know yeah. This and i just like knocked on the door i was like where am i <laughs> and i just got it it's me i remember observing an slp as an undergrad before i declared my major and she was playing like go fish in memory i'm like this is great you're just gonna play games and yeah i'm like all right i like it i yeah. like to play games I think yeah no it was creative I, I, Maybe that's why we have so many side hustles. I don't know. I almost thought of like another side schoolers. Can you hear me? Sorry, I lost froze it. for a second. That. Hello, hello. Okay. That one more time. Okay. Where did you lose? Where did, where did I lose you? I uh, probably the whole sentence. Okay. 
so I, I thought about another side hustle about, um, you know, just getting out there and like getting some education to high schoolers about this as a career. And it doesn't have to be, I'm going to talk to a group of guys, but it's just to let them know that the different avenues and aspects of speech yeah. covers like a medical side and a, you know, education school based side. And just, um, I mean, I feel like this is a career that's really only known once you get into college. Um, I know. Whereas you think about kids want to grow up and be doctors and lawyers and they know about that, but they don't know about SLP. Yeah. A lot of adults don't even know SLPs. Right, <laughs> but a lot right. of my high school students. Yeah. Yeah. I still t- my mom still says, are you an audiologist? And I'm like, no, no. I just stopped telling her what I do. I deal with the swallowing, not the hearing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. So to wrap up our lovely interview, it's like my new favorite word. Uh, so lovely. Talk- where are yeah where our listeners can find you and uh maybe a little bit more actually about dysphagia cafe if they're not following you they should be following you yeah sure so it's www.dysphagia dysphagia cafe.com uh, i'm also instagram at dysphagia dysphagia cafe and facebook and twitter and everything under the sun i spend way too much time on it um okay well it's good you're yeah. aware of that yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh our story now as we it's speak. yeah it's uh i real quick i started it at a conference six years ago i was on a coffee break at at a bakery next to the original starbucks in seattle and i had a quintessential moment of writing on a napkin and an idea about like how can i kind of bridge the researcher gap with the clinician gap yeah. you know I learn all this great stuff at this course, but when I get back, everybody's doing it one way and it's like a bad game of telephone, I thought. Yes. And so I, I went, I embarked on writing articles myself and I hated writing Maria. Uh-huh. So I did. So that was short lived and I just kind of reached out to the influencers and all the amazing writers in our field. Um, and a lot of people said no, because it was very new and not, peer reviewed and all that and a few uh, amazing people said yes and it kind of just snowballed from there and so I don't write the content um all the people who write your journal articles they're the ones who are giving their time to do that and um I just kind of I'm just bringing it down to like a thousand word level and hopefully creating a rabbit hole of references for you know the newer clinician or the um, newer generation clinician who wants to find something quickly and That's hopefully can, uh, read to lead to more education and just understanding of what we do. And so, yeah, it's, I think that's excellent. I think I told you it's like a little brother. I kind of like, you know, when I get rid of sometimes I hit him in the shoulder, we need to spend time apart. Um, but it's, uh, it's a labor of love for sure. And so it's been, um, it's it's been fun it's been a good experience i'm glad i did it i'm so. glad too because you seem i was research i was uh, researching i was reviewing some of those articles and you seem yeah. like you have some really interesting ones i saw one here about silent aspiration and i feel like if you're scrolling on instagram and you see your post you're like hey let me read this article and like right. instead of me scrolling through instagram looking at like uh what color influences my mood today <laughs> maybe i'll read about like you know something like silent aspiration you know and i think we have to really thank you for making these articles more accessible yeah no absolutely i ran out of wine so air cheers cheers. one little drop left so we're gonna little droplet me too me too (gasps) a little morsel of wine this morsel of wine goes to you Thank you. You too. I love this podcast. I'm not just saying that. Oh, thank you. You, you, you endeavor very, you know, I have to be honest. I, I, I do listen to podcasts on the way to work. Right. And I'm not, I, it's my way of kind of turning off work a little bit by not listening to so much SLP stuff. I know. And I turned you on and, and it's very, you guys do a really great job. It's very, uh, it's palatable. 
You see what I did? I see and what did there. It's, uh, it's, it's tasty. And, no, <laughs> you guys have <laughs> a very... Elevation and excursion. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> it's just very, uh, you have a great chemistry and it's entertaining and it's like perfect. It, you, you do a great job. Thank you so much. I did not, audience, I did not yeah. tell him to say that. Yeah. 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 I appreciate yeah. you uh, reaching out to Deb and I on our Instagram yeah. and saying, hey, I want to be on the show. And I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. I'm yeah. so glad we did this and we would love yeah. to have you back to maybe talk about like a more specific topic because you seem like you're just a plethora of information. Yeah, there's some shows on HBO that I'm really loving right now and we can yeah. talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, it doesn't have to be speech related. <laughs> I would love to come back. Like Silent love. Aspiration, Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Yeah, like just a lot. The topics are endless. They know? are. They really are. And I could connect those two, believe it or not. Okay. Maybe not now, but I, I, I could. I was going to say, you want to put you on the spot a little bit. But. I'll think about it. Well, well, I'm watching season two, and they are like letting, I guess the colonies are doing like the radioactive right now. Yeah. And yeah. I see a lot of them are coughing, and I'm like, oh, they're slowly <laughs> letting them die a miserable death from this radiation and they're probably going to have some overt signs and symptoms of, <laughs> symptoms of aspiration pneumonia oh my god and it, you know what did you, were you, did you consult for the show no I oh didn't. okay, okay. <laughs> it is my favorite binge watching though it is good it's good but that's all i have for today okay all right that's Thank good you so much jonathan for joining Absolutely. us Anytime. And, uh, I don't know when we're going to air this episode, but when we do, I'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Oh, do you have any quotes that you like to like live by? We usually like to end the episode. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. I want to. Okay. I'm going to do like a little dead air for a second. That's a, that's a real winner on the radio. Let's see. Hold on. Um, there's wax on wax off. Mm hmm um, which right. doesn't apply to anything at the moment, but, um, right. Well, that's what I, would, meaning, you know? I would, I would say just, um, just be yourself with your patients. I like you know, that. you like that. Just, just, you know, be yourself. Um, you know, let your personality come out. You know, that's, that's kind of like the unteachable thing. You know, we can't teach someone to like build rapport with somebody and, and to get buy-in for them to like really appreciate you and want to work with you. And, you know, don't, uh, just, just really have, take a second to like listen to them. It's one of the hardest things I think for us to do is to listen as speech with them. Absolutely. You know, and just listen to your patient and just be yourself and be your personality. And, um, you know, take a second to put yourself in their shoes. And, and I'm sure a lot of people do that anyway, but um, that, would be, that would be my quote. I like that quote. I'm gonna. Okay. We're gonna quote you, and you'll, that quote will be featured on our Instagram. Oh, thank you, thank yes. you. Along with some mood, uh, some yoga poses as well. I do love my yoga, probably. But would you, if I, if I put my work up, workout routine on Instagram, would that be something you'd be following or interested in following? Or? Why not? Okay. All, right. All right. Let's see what you got. Bring it okay. up. All right. Come on, Jonathan. Let's go. <laughs> <gasps> I think that was a great tip and great advice. And uh, I think that also takes time to accumulate, you know, because in the beginning, I always felt like I had to be the speech pathologist. And now I'm like, I'm a person and they're a person. And like, yeah. we're, you know, we got to really just try to be on the same level for them yeah. to listen to me and take my advice and, yeah, you know, do the carryover activities, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. follow the modific diet modifications. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, I've had good people along the way to kind of show me this stuff, you know? So the other quote would be to find a good mentor. We're back again, Maria. <laughs> no, I'm going to delete. Okay. We're back. I hope everyone enjoyed that interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really can't wait to hear what the listeners think about it. So leave us a review on iTunes and rate us and do all the good stuff. 
Right, yeah. Do that for us, please. Um, yeah, if you like the show, tell your friends about it. Uh, write a review on iTunes. That's like the best thing you can do for us. And mm-hmm. check us out on Patreon. Tell us what kind of bonus content you want, and we will see what we can do about that. Yes. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs>